why. It seems like only yesterday I walk into a room and found them fighting. Now when I walk into a room, I often find them necking. Necking? Well, I've never seen them necking. Well, not really necking, Janet, but I have stumbled onto them holding hands and kissing. They're sweet. Hi, honey. Hi, kid. They're on the porch. Hi, folks. Son? Yeah. Oh, son, where have you been all day? Oh, driving around all over the map. Probably used up a week's ration of gas, Dad. Pay some calls? One or two. Drinks on? Yeah, thanks. Oh, it's so good to have you home. Well, I'm not complaining. By the way, I ran into Mr. and Mrs. Pringle this morning. Oh, you did? Yeah, she said, uh, why don't we all come over for supper tonight? And what did you say? Well, I told her I thought Mom had invited some people over here. How discreet of you, dear. Yeah, so I told them to come over and join us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And what did they say to that? Well, she said I should check with you before issuing invitations. I might add, I think you're all being very silly about this whole thing. And so do I! Horrible. Well, I mean, with the war going on all over the world, I see no right that we should be quarreling here among ourselves. The President said so himself. We should all be united. I'll thank you to keep Mr. Truman out of this. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Mrs. Pringle is here to see you, ma'am. Mrs. Pringle? Where is she? I'm right here. Mother, this is against all my principles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to come barging in like this, Janet, in view of everything, but there are some things that I cannot ignore. Come on, Mary, time we shove off. No, I'd rather you stay. You know all about it, and I want this thing crashed out once and for all. You stay here, Raymond. Doris, you don't get so excited. I'm not excited. I'm just so furious I can chew nails. Well, Raymond has just told me something that... Well, Raymond, you tell them. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. I insist, Raymond. I think it's dumb. Never mind what you think. You repeated it to me, and now you're going to repeat it to them. Sorry I brought this whole thing up. This will be a lesson to me. Go ahead, Raymond. Tell them what you heard at the Campbell's. Well, I was over at the Campbell's house selling magazine. By the way, Mr. Harper, do you take true love stories? Oh, never mind. I'll tell them what you told me. According to Raymond, who distinctly overheard it from the kitchen, Marjorie Campbell was telling her bridge club that you had told her that Mildred, my daughter, was nothing better than a little tramp. How ridiculous. I never said anything of the sort. That's a word I never use. Raymond, is that the word you heard? Well, it sounded like it, but it could have been scam. Don't quibble, Raymond. You told me it was tramp, and you even asked me whether I thought Mildred was a tramp. Dorothy, I can't believe you listened to all of this garbled gossip. Kindly keep out of this, Mary. I'm talking to Janet. Wait a minute. We wanted to beat it, and you asked us to stay. Seems to me she's got a right to put in her two bits work. <laughs> I think it's all very dumb. Oh, you keep quiet. You think everything's dumb. It's my experience that most things are. And furthermore, Amy Barker's laundress overheard a long conversation about corn. That laundress is not very reliable. But what do you know about it? Well, she signed the deal up himself, and then he welched on the deal, and I got stuck. May I make a suggestion? By all means. Now, it seems to me you're never going to get anywhere by hashing this whole thing over. Why don't you just bury the hatchet and forget it? I think that's a wonderful idea. So, you you, Dexter? Well, I never go so far as to say Mildred's exactly a tramp, but I do think she's a bad influence. What? Why are you going to get that shut? That's my shit, you are. Well, you've said quite enough. I can see now where the entire neighborhood is being influenced and prejudiced against Mildred. And it's perfectly all right with me. I can only say that I'm sorry that a friendship of so many years should have to end like this. Now, don't fly off the handle, Mrs. Pringle. You were laughing about it this morning. Well, that was before Raymond had repeated to me the outrageous things your mother had said. Now, wait a minute, Dorothy. It's no use, Janet. I'm never going to set foot in this house again. And I shall forbid both Raymond and Mildred to do so. And Columbus will no longer be welcome in my house, nor will Lenny. Come, Raymond. She gets in these moods every once in a while. She likes to dramatize it. Grandma! Coming! <laughs> <laughs> Just as a matter of interest, Janet, did you say what she said you said? Well, of course not. I never said anything like it. All I did say, and I said it in the strictest confidence, was that what does it matter what I said? Well, it seems to matter quite a lot, Mother. Oh, I said, and I don't mind repeating it, that with all the silly, uniform, crazy girls running around these days, a great many of them turning into little tramps, I'd be just as happy if Corliss saw as little as possible of Mildred. 
seem to say quite a mouthful. Come on, Mary. <laughs> Shut them off for the camera. Harry and I walk part of the way with you. They'll just hash and rehash the cold as it's all easy. We'll coach you as what to say. Tell them as what not to say, huh, Bill? <laughs> Gee whiz. Now that that's really in the fire. Yeah, well, you didn't help matters much. Only, no, go on, get out of here. But Lenny, I've been by for dinner. Well, we'll call you when soup's on. <laughs> I'm glad you kicked him out, Lenny. He's awful. Well, you're no better than he is. But, Lenny, darling, what about him? It's safe. That's good for Dexter. It only gripes me. God, just last night I was telling Mom and Dad how great it was you growing out of being a pain in the neck. Now you still manage to go things up all the time. Lenny, you don't. I don't mind being treated like a heel when I've been a heel. But I haven't done anything. Oh, come on. Stop <laughs> that silly sniveling. Come on, stop it. A fat lot of good it does society to love your own brother when he still treats you like a swine. For God's sake. <laughs> what do you want? Your parents will be back for at least ten minutes. Get out of here, you filthy, sneaky little spy! Mother's having hysterics, too. Miller's also crying her eyes out. And Pop is swearing to beat the band. Words I've never even heard before. Yes, sir, over at the Pringles house, hell's a pop. What's Miller <laughs> crying about? What about? It's all very funny, see? She was gone all day and she won't tell where she was. Now Pop's beginning to think that she is a little tramp after all. What about you? Do you know where Mildred was? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. But what I've just been through wild horses couldn't drag out of me. Yeah, well, it's too bad you didn't feel that way before you shot your mouth off to your mother. Lenny, I've never dreamed of opening a can of worms like that. I just mentioned it in a sort of chit chat. Then I thought that might amuse her. Oh, I have a note for you from Mildred. That would be legible. She wrote her purple ink and wept all over it. <laughs> You're quite emotional, aren't you? Most women are. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to send an answer, I'll be glad to. And it's no use trying to call her because she can't take any calls. Listen, are your parents going to be home all evening? Yes, but I could arrange to have them out. You could? Sure, what's up? Um, how about 30? You can rely on it. Raymond, you're terrific. Where was Mildred all day, Lenny? Were you with her? Yes, I was. What did you do? Can you keep a secret? You crossed my heart. Well, I don't know. Look, I'll take it off the blood, like we did when we were kids. You know I never went back on that. Okay. I swear by all that I hold sacred never to reveal the secret. What is it, Lenny? Tell me. Mildred and I were married this morning. Married? Gosh, <laughs> Lenny, that is my No, but I like to keep it that way for now. We drove across the state line and found a justice of the peace. They're the only ones that know, besides you. Aren't you going to tell Mom and Dad? No way, not until this whole feud blows over. The way things are now, Mildred feels her parents would move heaven and earth to get her to know. Could they? I suppose they could. See, she lied about her age in the certificate. She won't be 18 until next month. Golly, in no, all, that'd be terrible. Yeah, terrible's right. Gosh, this makes Mildred my sister-in-law. Uh-huh. Oh boy, now I like to bear that 45 cents on her. Relatives never pay up. <laughs> may I see what Mildred wrote you, Lenny? No, you may not. Are you terribly in love? Well, we didn't just get married for the hell of it. I mean, this is for keeps. It shouldn't be a secret, Lenny. Mom and Daddy should know. Maybe. And they might even forget about this whole feud, but that really wasn't what I was thinking about. You see, all my life they've been first in everything. And now, well, if I go overseas, naturally I'll be thinking of my wife first. I mean, it's only natural for me to feel that way. You know what I mean, Corliss? I know what you mean, Lenny. But don't you think Mom and Dad's feelings would be hurt more if you don't tell them about such a wonderful thing like getting married? I don't know. Gosh, loving people makes life frightfully complicated, doesn't it? You know, you're not a bad little lady at that. I'm glad I told you. I am too. Glad that you trusted me. Well, I'll see Mildred tonight and I'll let her know that I've told you. Maybe between the three of us we can figure out some way to tell everyone else. Oh, I hope so, Lenny, because it's such tremendously important that I can tell you. You took an oath in blood. They could torture me and I would never tell. I'll kill him! Can you get that picture in front of your nose, dear? I'll sue him, that's what I'll do. I'll have him arrested! <laughs> Please sit down. 